Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The shooter at the Washington Navy Yard was a practicing Buddhist, but what was his motive? How does this affect the debate on the Second Amendment? We have a newsmaking interview with Colorado State Senator Kent Lambert, and we also ask him about homosexual civil unions. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this program, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Let's get right to our first story. Multiple sources now report that a practicing Buddhist man has reportedly shot and killed 12 innocent civilian defense contractors this week at the Washington Navy Yard. Aaron Alexis, the murderer, age 34, was a Navy reservist and he was also killed. He served in the Navy from 2007 to 2011 and he received a general discharge, not quite an honorable discharge, in part because of his mental health issues and reported incidents of post-traumatic stress disorder. And he also had previously been involved in two gun incidents in Fort Worth, Texas and in Seattle, Washington, where one time he shot his weapon, discharged his revolver into the ceiling of his apartment. That frightened the upstairs neighbors. The police were called and the man was arrested. Later in Seattle, he shot the tires of some people that he was angry with. And at that time, he uh, reportedly fell into what he told police was a blind rage, a blackout, but his anger was against his enemies that he was shooting at. Well, what happened this time? What were his motives this week when he snapped and killed 12 civilian defense contractors using one shotgun and two pistols on the Navy base? Alexis was reportedly also a civilian defense contractor for Hewlett Packard. He had a secret clearance. He had a security badge. He was allowed on the base, but he was also originally from Queens, New York, where he claimed to be a first responder to the 9-11 tragedy in 2001. And he said that he developed post-traumatic stress disorder and anger issues as a result of that tragedy. But to treat his own anger issues, he didn't choose to forgive his enemies or get deliverance from anger or sin as Jesus taught us to turn the other cheek and forgive those who hurt us. Instead, he turned to what we perceive as a violent form of Buddhism. Now, we have some quotes here from a couple of members of his Buddhist congregation who knew him personally. They're from Texas. And one of the persons said here, and I'm not gonna try and pronounce his long name, Alexis had converted to Buddhism and prayed at the local Buddhist temple, but he also carried a gun with him and he would frequently complain about being the victim of discrimination. So maybe there was a racial element in his motive from that quote. Here's another one. One of his Buddhist friends at the temple said, we're all shocked. We are, of course, are nonviolent. Aaron, however, was a very good practitioner of Buddhism. He could chant better than even some of the Thai congregants. Buddhism involves chants to various spiritual entities and you're trying to commune with the spiritual world. In fact, there are sometimes, sadly, very violent elements of Buddhism. For example, those who chant to the false god of war, Kali, and one of the Buddhist mantras is to destroy your enemies. And here we see an image that a uh, Buddhist painted of the god Kali to destroy your enemies. Notice she's holding a decapitated head. She's got skulls around her neck. So this is not just a spiritual thing against demonic spirits, but it's to destroy certain kinds of people. And maybe this explains why that Aaron Alexis was not only involved and obsessed with violent video games, but he also began hearing voices. The more he practiced his Buddhist chanting, the more he began listening to those spiritual voices that were guiding him to do perhaps unspeakable things. Although many Buddhists claim to be nonviolent, maybe because they're vegetarians, at least they don't eat flesh, right? But other factions of Buddhism, including those who chant to the goddess of war, to destroy your enemies, do practice 
a violent form of Buddhism. We saw that, for example, in Vietnam, most of the VC, the Viet Cong, were practicing Buddhists and, of course, communists, and they were very violent in uh, their destructive ways. But what was Aaron Alexis's motive? Was his violent religion part of his motive in shooting his victims? Alexis himself was killed by police during the attack, making 13 victims. This reminds us of the Fort Hood shooting in 2009 when a Muslim, Major Nidal Hassan, a radical Islamist, killed 13 soldiers and wounded 30 others, but later apologized. Did he apologize to the victims he killed or wounded? No, he apologized to Allah for ever having served in the American military. So these violent anti-liberty religious beliefs, are they part of the reason that left-wingers like Nidal Hassan and Aaron Alexis carry out gun violence? Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. I wanna suggest that it's a demonic spirit that is whispering these voices in his ear to go kill those people. It's a demonic spirit in that strain of Buddhism. It's a demonic spirit in that strain of Islam, which tells you to go and kill your enemies and manifest your anger in violence. That's the opposite of the Holy Spirit. And what did Jesus teach? Love your enemies, turn the other cheek. People who follow the Christian religion would listen, for example, to Romans chapter 12. Here's the scripture I wanna leave you with. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to what you do. To give thought to what is honorable in the sight of everybody. If possible, so far it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Don't avenge yourself, but leave the wrath to God. For it is written, and God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If he's thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing so, you heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This practice of, of Jesus Christ to overcome evil by doing good to your enemies is the best way to receive healing for your anger issues. You have post-traumatic stress disorder? You're angry about what you saw? Sure, go care for the poor. Take out your anger by showing love to others and soon you'll be filled with love. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, Senator Kent Lambert will talk about the Second Amendment response to this shooting in Washington. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you pro-life? Do you believe that abortion kills innocent children? If so, I want you to take action today and sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's three petitions we need you to sign. The number one is to stop Planned Parenthood from getting your taxpayer dollars. Did you know they've received now $487 million in your taxpayer dollars? I don't think that's right. They use that money to facilitate 329,445 abortions. Not really to pay for adoption or mammograms, but just to kill innocent children. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's number two petition we want you to sign, and that's to defund Obamacare. This bad healthcare law is now forcing Christian employers to pay for contraception, sterilization, and abortion pills free of charge for all their employees, or the Christian employer has to pay a $100 fine per day per employee. That's gonna bankrupt our friends like the Hobby Lobby Corporation, Christian business owners, and even Catholic hospitals now are being forced to pay for abortions. The Obama administration is now promoting the Plan B abortion pill over the counter for children as young as seven years old. Here's petition number three we need you to sign at PrayInJesusName.org to help pass Senate Bill 583, the Life Begins at Conception Act. This personhood bill, introduced by my friend, Senator Rand Paul, can actually defend life and help overturn Roe versus Wade. Take action today. I know you care about the unborn, but please sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. We will fax that petition free of charge to your congressman. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Take action today if you're pro-life. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching PIJN News. The political response of the left-wing politi politicians in Washington, D.C. now has been to take advantage of this terrible shooting in the Washington Navy Guard 
and make overtures to infringe upon our Second Amendment rights and establish gun-free zones across America. Well, the Washington Times reports that this Washington Navy Yard building in which 3,000 people had worked was actually already a gun-free zone. They put stickers on the windows to say, don't bring your guns to work. And obviously that failed because the only people who ignore the stickers are the people who violate the laws, like uh, this guy who brought his weapon into work and massacred now 12 innocent people. Here's a quote from Senator Dianne Feinstein in response to the shooting. She said, stop the litany of massacres. When will enough be enough? Congress must stop shirking its responsibility to resume a thoughtful debate on gun violence in this country. We must do more to stop this endless loss of life. Well, joining me here in the studio today is a Colorado State Senator, Kent Lambert. Welcome, Senator. Thank you, chaps. Sir, you're uh, from Colorado and there was a big battle last year and the Democrats forced, I think five or six of these anti-gun amendments on the people of Colorado and then there was a big recall election just a couple of weeks ago where the Senate President John Morris was thrown out by the people in reaction to uh, perhaps the Obama administration's pressure. Uh, Joseph Biden came and pressured many of the Democrats to pass these strict gun control laws. Where did you stand on that and what are your thoughts? Well, of course, I am very opposed to new gun control laws. This, uh, like the Navy Yard shooting, this came on the aftermath of the Aurora shootings here in Colorado and previous shootings in uh, Columbine several years ago. But, you know, it, uh, I, I would agree with uh, Senator Feinstein on one thing, enough is enough. Since the 1950s, I, I don't think there have been any of these mass shootings in any other place than a gun-free zone. We need to eliminate gun-free zones and allow people the constitutional right of self-defense uh, because it seems to always work. Well, it's been said that the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. So, and I've also, we see in Chicago, for example, just in the month of August, 51 people were murdered in gun-free Chicago. So do you think these moves by the Democrats actually help people or they help criminals? Well, that's like in gun-free Washington, D.C. It's like in gun-free Aurora. It just happened, maybe it was a great coincidence, but it just happened that that Aurora theater was uh, a part of a chain that does not allow guns. It was a posted no gun zone. Uh, and the mall in which the theater uh, was placed was supposedly a gun-free zone. Again, it's just not the, uh, it's not the way to go. We had a, a close to a massacre here in Colorado Springs in, in my district at a, a very large church called New Life Church. And they had uh, specially trained volunteers at that church that were able to stop uh, a gunman who was armed very, very much like these other shooters. Uh, just one person with a gun was able to save hundreds of people by you know, treating it as a criminal violence episode and defending themselves and defending the people of their church. So the police can't be everywhere, the security guards can't be everywhere. Maybe more citizens need to conceal carry. Um, what are some of the laws that the, the now deposed Senate President John Morris, the Democrat, uh, passed last year. What, what did he do? Well, one of the laws that did not pass, I think, is very important, and that was to ban concealed get, carry uh, permits, which are issued by our county sheriffs, ban all of that concealed carry on college campuses. That's been a rather contentious issue for a couple of years, and our Colorado Supreme Court decided that the way the uh, state statute is written is that people with concealed carry permits should be able to carry uh, on college campuses. That was a bill that went through and there was such an outrage against the process that the uh, Democrat majority uh, started in the, in the state Senate that they eventually just pulled the bill because uh, it, it, you know, we had rape victims and everybody else that came and testify that they could have protected themselves on college campuses with a concealed carry permit. So uh, even some of the Democrats uh, switched over and, and voted to kill that bill. And I heard many of the Democrat citizens signed the recall petition to throw out John Morris and throw out Angela Heron. Uh, and two heavily Democrat districts now have recalled the bad Democrat senators and installed Republicans for the first time. This was a historic recall. How did you observe this? 
Well, I, th I think that's, uh, that's accurate. I think the, uh, you know, I, this is not just a Republican Democrat issue. A lot of these districts have a lot of unaffiliated voters in Colorado. But as you said, even uh, especially in, in Pueblo, this is a heavily Hispanic Democrat district, but uh, a, a lot of good people down there that, that believe in their gun rights, that believe in their right of self-defense. And when it came to this election, they said, you know, the Democrats have gone just too far. Wonderful. We're gonna take a short break, but I wanna give you this scripture. Uh, I believe Jesus would support the Second Amendment because Jesus said in Luke 22, if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy a sword. And then his disciples replied, look, Lord, we have two swords here. And he said, that is enough. So Jesus advocated self-defense. Now he also said, uh, you know, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Don't use that as a, as a means and Christians should never try to overthrow the government. But for self-defense purposes, two swords among 12 disciples was a good idea. We're gonna come back after the short break and talk with Senator Lambert about civil unions in Colorado and should Christians have freedom from homosexual weddings. Let's take a short break. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do, but you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies' room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a ladies room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. You're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. On PIJN News, we have reported how Christian photographers and florists and bakers now are being punished for their refusal to participate in homosexual weddings. Well, we talked about this case in New Mexico where Jonathan and Elaine Helguenen were told they must participate. They must photograph a gay wedding or face fines by the Supreme Court. Also in Washington state, Baronel Stutzman, a florist, has been fined and now sued by the Washington Attorney General for refusing to provide flowers to a gay wedding. Also here in Colorado, Jack Phillips, a Christian baker in Denver, faces up to one year in jail for refusing to bake a homosexual wedding cake. And that's being enforced by the Republican Attorney General, John Southers, because this law was passed for civil unions last year in Colorado. Here to comment again is my friend, Senator Kent Lambert, uh, state Senator from Colorado. Welcome back, Senator. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. You were there when the civil unions debate happened last year, what did you see? Well, first of all, in Colorado, we have a constitutional prohibition against homosexual marriage. However, this law just uh, turned that constitutional provision on its head. Basically, the statute does a couple things. First of all, it goes through every statute in the state of Colorado and redefines what marriage is. So every 
uh, particular that says marriage will now also say civil unions. Anything would say spouse and basically now says, you know, uh, well, it says spouse uh, under the new law. Uh, so it's taken any gender out of it. And so they've just completely redefined what the intent of the Constitution is in Colorado. Uh, the second thing is that there are no uh, waivers or provisions for any contrary thought, whether it's religion or just you know people's expression of their own morality. Uh, it completely suppresses basically any ideas. It's a mind control experiment by the uh, majority party, the Democrats here in Colorado, to force everybody, including children in, in schools, everything else, uh, under penalty of law to believe in homosexual marriage. Well, how can they control our thoughts? I mean, it's one thing if we have, a, like this Christian bakery as a conscience objection. I don't wanna participate in that kind of a ceremony because it's against my religion. Doesn't his First Amendment right trump Colorado law or how are they redefining that? Well, I think that will come out in these court cases, but yes, I mean, we have a long tradition in the United States, as you know, in the US military of conscientious, conscientious objection to uh, things like going to war and things like that. That's always been uh, understood as a person's uh, right of conscience. Uh, this completely, in my opinion, tramples those rights. It tramples and is specifically targeted against religious rights. We're also on this show reporting the national legislation called ENDA, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, which even Nancy Pelosi admits is a bathroom bill that would allow cross-dressing men to use the ladies' bathroom. Uh, how, did, how did that play out in Colorado? Well, I think the, uh, we, we had a so-called bathroom bill, but it wasn't that extensive here in Colorado. It was a matter of signage. It was a matter of forcing uh, you know, family bathrooms and so forth. But I think in the long term, that was only one step in their long-term agenda. Uh, we're seeing now a uh, you know, complete rewrite of our educational curriculum to force more uh, uh, sex education uh, of anything that the teachers unions basically want to teach uh, our children and basically forcing uh, the children to do that. It's no longer an opt-in policy, it's an opt-out policy, which uh, you know a lot of parents won't do. And I think that could be very, very destructive because now they will be using uh, education, the, you know, both higher and uh, K through 12 education as a more of a propaganda machine even than they already do. Here in Colorado, there was a young boy, six-year-old Coy Mathis, who has been dressed by his parents as if he is a girl, and they filed a complaint to demand that he be allowed to use the, the girl's public bathroom in a public school. Out in California, they just passed uh, AB 1266 to provide co-ed bathrooms, and doesn't that violate the Christian parents' right uh, for their child's privacy? Well, I think it, uh, violates every parent's right and every student's right of privacy. Privacy will no longer be in effect in the United States if the, this agenda continues in the direction that it is right now. Uh, you know, this is uh, certainly the Brave New World, the Aldous Huxley uh, novel that, you know, Big Brother is here, he's alive and well, and we're going to force you into uh, the kind of agendas that, you know, some of the greatest dictators in in world history have tried to press in the past. So I, I think this is uh, very intimidating. It's an intentionally trying to change Americans' mindset, uh, the mindset of America, that we value privacy, we value individual liberty and individual thought. This is, in my opinion, strictly a totalitarian type of expression that they're trying to uh, suppress free speech and free, free ideas in our country. Amen to that. Uh, you've been a state senator now for four years. You're up for re-election re in 2014. Uh, your website is? It's www.kentlambert.com, real easy. <laughs> Kentlambert.com, and you're also a, a 1974 graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy. Yes. That's where I went to school. Uh, tell me a little bit about your military career and maybe your family. Well, uh, my family, of course, accompanied th me through uh, 30 years of active duty after I graduated from the academy. Uh, one great expression or uh, experience I had at the academy as I was elected chairman of the cadet professional ethics committee, and uh, actually tried to uh, teach cadets, you know, ethical behavior 
uh, in my senior year there at the academy. But I went on to uh, fly B-52s. I was an instructor pilot and then cross-trained into modeling simulation analysis, uh, degree in operations research. And I practiced that at the Pentagon for about eight years and uh, was the first colonel assigned to the Space Analysis Center at uh, Air Force Space Command. Um, so that was, that was pretty thrilling. And then I had a couple of overseas assignments, one in Jordan, one in Sweden. In both cases, I was an attache. And um, in, in Jordan, I was in charge of the military assistance uh, program for the Jordanian Air Force. And then I was the defense attache and senior uh, officer in the Office of Defense Cooperation with uh, Sweden. So how many years on active duty? Uh, 30. 30, fantastic. Well, you know, this is a, a man who has served his country. Now he's serving the citizens of Colorado in the Colorado Senate. Thank you, Senator Kent Lambert. Thanks, Again, Jeff. his website is kentlambert.com. Again, that's kentlambert.com. You can get more information there. I'd like to close in prayer, just thinking about people like Jack Phillips. And here's a scripture from Matthew chapter five. And let's pray this blessing upon Christians in Colorado or nationwide who are now facing this kind of persecution that we talked about. Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name. And we pray the scripture from Jesus' quote in Matthew chapter five, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Father, we pray that your blessing would be upon Jack Phillips and Baron Ol Stutzman and the Helguenans and all of the Christians who are trying to stop and oppose this government oppression of their conscience for blessed are they when they're reviled and persecuted, their reward in heaven is great. Father, we pray your blessing on them. I pray your blessing on Senator Lambert and the other uh, godly men and women who are trying to serve, uh, not just here, but America in legislatures across the country. We pray this together in Jesus' name, amen. I wanna encourage you to visit PrayInJesusName.org. That's our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Please make a donation if you can. I don't take a dime of salary from donations to our nonprofit, but help us to stay on the air today and bring you excellent programming like this. Thank you, Senator Lambert, and Thanks, we'll Jeff. see you next time. God bless you in Jesus' name. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.